Hello, everyone. I hope you are hearing me today. This is Evo, Evo Haining at Reality Craft coming to you with Prompt Craft One, first in the webinar series on how to get what you're looking for out of generative media. Uh, this is Evo, and I'm just going to come on board for just a second and say hi, everyone. It's good to see you. Um, we are going to do a one hour workshop today, followed by some live streaming time. And I'm going to take you through a number of the tools that we've been working with and exploring. Uh, some of these are from the book and some of these are from our previous experiments over the last few years. So welcome to this latest iteration of prompt craft one we are going to be looking at how to form your prompts in a number of different tools mid journey stable diffusion canva and also getting started in places such as 3d worlds for those of you who have picked up the prompt craft book thank you so much for helping to make that a number one technical release this week i'm really grateful for all of your insights experiments and ways of participating together so we are here for prompt craft one which is an introduction to the ideas of prompt writing prompt engineering and what are the tools of generative media this is a survey, but we are going to explore primarily image creation today in this workshop. So uh, we're going to be looking at tools for mid-journey. We're going to be looking at a number of language choices and ways in which you can improve what you're getting out of these different tools. We're going to look at different tools and resources that you might want to have on hand as you are getting started and working together. Uh, we're going to discuss how you get through image prompts, maybe taking your existing art and spinning it in new ways. To do that, we're going to be looking at a handful of different interface choices, both Midjourney, which is in Discord, and Stable Diffusion on the web. And we're going to look at other tools that are used for writing just in very general terms today. Uh, this is not an in-depth course on the writing tools that will be offered separately soon. So if you are curious about all of those topics about uh, ChatGPT or Claude and all of the other sort of copy AI, Jasper AI tools that are coming out for writing, there will be a separate workshop for you soon. And this one is an entry level that will help you with some of the language choices to get there. This workshop, however, is not going to give you those recipes specifically. So we're going to focus today on creative ideation and how we get started in this process. Now, uh, this is a process of learning to articulate your creative vision and then helping to realize it over time and iteration. What that means is the first time you put in a prompt, you're probably not going to get what you thought you were going to get out of it. And what you do get is going to surprise you. So this is a process of creative ideation and iteration in order to create your vision. Now, your vision is going to vary from everyone else's, and that's where your voice and your unique creative input come in. So we are here at Reality Craft. I'm based in Oakland, California, and Reality Craft is a game. It's a process. It's now a series of books, as you've seen in the first book, Prompt Craft. It was also a physical place, a design lab and a gallery for generative creativity. This is a place where all of you can come and realize and create new works, work with me on concept development. I am currently working with conference organizers. I'm working with theatrical organizers. I'm working with TV teams. I am working with companies that are building new tools. And we are combining both physical artistry and, and the handcraft of how we make things with these new AI or generative tools for world building. So welcome to that process. Uh, you are welcome to join the Reality Craft group, which is also on Facebook and, uh, and or follow along on places like LinkedIn as well. Prompt Craft, which we are here to explore today, is a process to realize and design 
your generative creative work. So that is the process of writing effective prompts. That is in words, that is in images, that is in numbers. That could certainly be in things like emoji or any number of other types of media. So if we're talking about effective prompt writing, you are putting together a series of words, numbers, other characters such as uh, emoji or certain types of punctuation for syntax. All of those things express an idea to be generated. Now, that has to be parsed into specific sections that in, in an image diffusion model are going to be brought to life, basically brought out of the static, out of the noise, and into some sort of resolution. You are choosing the content type, the descriptors, the adjectives, the, the scene itself. What is this thing trying to paint? The style in which it is painting, and that is both artistic styles, but also uh, periods of time or uh, even cultures and ways of working. Uh, composition, which could be words related to uh, theatrical design or something you might find in a script, something a photographer might use, for example, a lens type. And then parameters. Parameters we are going to explore in this workshop and we also explore this in advanced topics as there are many different types of parameters we can uh, experiment with in order to get better results along the way. So today we are going to look at prompt formation in two different tools uh, and then there's a, a third tool that we are going to introduce that can kind of let you bridge between them. So uh, in this section we are looking at stable diffusion and mid-journey uh if you have not watched one of these before these are two very similar prompts uh that were done i want to say uh in december of uh 2022 uh using both of these tools uh in this case dream studio using a v 1.5 of stable diffusion and mid-journey i believe was in v4 so um your mileage may vary. Obviously, uh, every different tool you use is going to give you different results. There are versions of Stable Diffusion that can give you highly realistic uh, sort of photo portrait style results. Uh, there are certain hacks to using Midjourney to get similar results as well. So uh, you get to choose your path for today's workshop either. Uh, go ahead and enable sign up for a free Midjourney account uh, or you can go to one of the websites here on the right uh, that is diffusion.land or beta.dreamstudio.ai. Uh, both of those are options for you. We are going to go through Dream Studio today quite a bit. So dreamstudio.ai if you want to follow along. Um, and we're also going to look at Midjourney, specifically using Midjourney before. So if you have not used Midjourney before, you can go to midjourney.com and sign up there. Now, when you're using a new tool, generally you're going to get a certain number of credits uh, to use for free. That might get you somewhere between uh, 10, 20, maybe 100 images generated. So please plan ahead, think about what you are wanting to create, and maybe uh, spread out your trials over more than one tool so that you are effectively choosing the tool that's right for you um, and not necessarily overspending in the process. So we're going to explore getting started in Midjourney. As I mentioned, uh, when you get started in Discord, Midjourney was giving you 25 images. I'm not sure if that's still the case, and I do need to double check and make sure that that is true. Um, but for those of you who have not used Midjourney before, you are going to basically start by typing into the command line to the Midjourney bot. Uh, when you join Midjourney for the first time, you're sort of thrown into the public threads with everyone. This is an okay place to learn but you're going to find that very quickly you get overwhelmed by uh, the noise of lots and lots of people generating all at once. You're not going to find it's very easy to have a tracked conversation. So you might want to either bring the Midjourney bot onto your own Discord server, or you can engage in a direct message with the Midjourney bot. You might need to turn that capacity on in Discord. However, 
once you are there, it's just you and the journey. It's not difficult. It's, it makes it quite a bit easier to manage uh, some of what we would consider to be the um, fine tuning work of an iterative process. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see about bringing up my Discord window here. And uh, I've been working with the Mid Journey Bot today on a series. So I'm gonna see if I can bring that up for us here. Now, when we are exploring bringing in mid-journey, I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of hackery here because I'm, I'm only going to share part of my screen um, with us for this because of the way um, because of the way mid-journey and, and Discord work. It's sometimes a little bit challenging to be sort of in the direct message thread. So I'm going to bring up the mid-journey bot and then I'll bring this all in together here. So uh, Majority runs through Discord. Uh, some people find that that interface is really great for them. Some of them find that is not working for them. So I just want to let you know ahead of time that if that's not working for you, you're not alone. Um, you might want to try a web version of something like Open Journey instead. So uh, we're going to be in Discord together. Uh, this is my Discord direct conversation with the Midjourney bot. You can see it's currently trying to think about whether it wants to bring up my, my cat pictures from earlier because I was working on a series of sort of abstract pretty kitties. So I'm going to take you through how I have a conversation with Midjourney bot and how I form a prompt here and sort of what's happening. So um, what you're seeing right here in this image is an image prompt. It is using an image. In this case, uh, the image was of my cat. Uh, and then I am spinning that into a new type of image where I can get new types of effects. Now, um, some of what you're seeing here, these are exactly taken from the same series where I'm using my cat to do something that's more like an artistic portrait. Um, when you are here and you are forming your prompt for the first time, you're gonna be typing it down here in the message window and it's going to end up looking like this, right? So you see here the text realistic feline, woman, cat, flower, character, all of these words are separated by commas in this case in order to create some sense of uh, sections so that it understands how to read the prompt as well. Now, if you're trying to do a complex scene, you might end up with something closer to 40 or 50 words with a, a much more complex um, phrasing than what we have here. But all of those five elements I described to you in terms of um, the, the descriptors of what we're trying to create here, the uh, style, right? This sort of cutout graphic style with the flowers, octane render, um, being a rendering engine that creates a specific look to this. So it looks like something that is not necessarily um, realistic, but it, it almost looks like something that you might come across in a video game portrait. So these are the kinds of um, phrasing that you might put together. Now I'm going to scroll up a little bit and show you a very different uh, prompt to start because this is a, a bit simpler. Uh, we're in this case, the ones that you see here with these sort of historic Art Nouveau cats, um, I have started with the idea that uh, this is going to be sort of a, a landscape poster series with a gilt frame, um, that the style is sort of Art Nouveau, and that the scene is depicting these sort of rarefied Art Nouveau cats on parade, right? These are, um, you know, maybe turn of the century cats who went out and were staying at a luxury hotel or something. Right, so you can see the words that I'm using and how I'm breaking up those words. And then we're gonna talk about the different sections of that, uh, 
prompt together. So um, I want you to feel free to interrupt me if you are watching the stream and you have questions. I can do my best to anticipate or break in and, and bring those questions to life for you. Uh, so don't feel like you have to um, leave a comment in the in the chat, but you absolutely are welcome to if you are struggling with something particular here. So what you're seeing, my, my mid-journey conversation with the bot, right? It has these couple of elements that we talked about before. So it has that image prompt, that the, the later versions, the images you saw with my cat, with the flowers have an image, and then they have the, the text, the description of the scene. And then they have those parameters, what you're seeing with two hyphens and then no farms, IW, which is image weight, or AR, which is an aspect ratio. In my case, what we just saw with my prompts, we saw uh, I was using AR 16 colon nine. That is aspect ratio appropriate to something closer to a presentation, like a, maybe I wanted to put this in a PowerPoint or use it in a video. Uh, same with what you see there with Q2. That's an, a quality upgrade, meaning I am going to spend more of my maternity credits and ask for it to spend more generative time on these images and give me more detail and a higher resolution. So these are the choices you can make in parameters. And there's a wide variety of parameters that you can uh, modulate and pick from, not just in mid-journey, but also in, in stable diffusion. And they, they operate a little bit differently, but they operate in similar ways. So we're gonna talk about some of those parameters. I just wanted you to see, for example, how a prompt is formed and to look at a couple of different types of prompts, right? So here I've added the color blue, um, portraiture, which I've spelled wrong, but it's still figured it out. Um, you can see where certain language choices maybe are working for me or aren't. And you can also see where I have chosen to make new variations of an idea. So when you're in here and you're looking at those U1, U2, U3, U4, V1, V2, V3, V4, and you're trying to figure out, well, what do I want to do with this? I, I can immediately say, well, you know, I like U4. This is great. And, and I'm getting a good feedback on U4. So I want to see more variations of that. Um, and in this case, I can remix it. So by remixing it, I'm going to respell portraiture <laughs> and, and make sure that I have fixed my spelling error. Um, but I might also choose to add words or to refine the prompt uh, through remixing. And I'm going to talk to you very quickly while I still have Midjourney open about how to turn on remixing. If you haven't done this before and this is your first time in this tool, your settings are uh, reached by typing a slash and settings. And what that's going to do is let you control which version of Midjourney you're using. It's also going to let you control certain things about quality and resolution. Um, this Niji mode, for example, is if you are trying to create sort of anime style uh, art and characters, test photo might be useful if you're trying to create photorealism. Um, as I mentioned, I'm using Q2, which is a higher quality boost, basically. Um, I am in an unlimited mode, so by paying $30 a month to Midjourney, I can uh, create as many images as I want. So I will keep creating at a high quality, uh, but I might do, you know, one or 200 images a day. Um, now there are, there are reasons to do that and there are reasons not to do that. And that might be what's right for your style. Same with choosing to upscale in a specific way, choosing a style very high or low. Um, the method I mentioned to you earlier in terms of remixing is what I have turned on here with the dice. And this is really vital for those of you who are trying to um, get better at the iterative process as uh, Remixing is going to bring up the dialogue window when you hit a V1, V2, V3, V4 a variation. By variation, you are also then able to add new content, add new words, maybe refine it. 
Now, you might choose to refine it by parameter and, and change something like the aspect ratio, ratio or the image weight, um, or you might choose to refine it in a completely different way. So um, in this case, let's look at what I got out of these four cats and see if I like any of them. Uh, well, I'm getting some blue cats, which is starting to make me feel a little weird. So I only really want one. You know, so this is the problem with blue portraiture is that it, it's interpreting that as the color of the cat. So that's where I might want to remix and say, you know, a blue suit on cats <laughs> instead of blue cats. Uh, those are the sorts of things that can help it understand exactly what you're looking for. Where you're using commas or um, other types of punctuation can help create breaks so that it understands to render those things sort of separately within a within a cohesive picture so for example you know in this case all of the cats are wearing blue suits but they are not blue so that is closer to what i was hoping for now um there may be other aspects of this that i don't like and i might want to take this out to a different tool to do things with it and that's currently very you know relatively easy to do. I can say upscale number four, like I, I might like number four, but I also kind of like number one. I could also make a whole series of these, take 20, 30, 40 images, bring them together, and then train a new model so that I could build a world that represents all of these cats in the year 1890 in my cat hotel or whatever the storyline might be. So that's a very quick example of how all of these tools work in the journey. Um, that is honestly one of the quickest versions we've done of the mid journey walkthrough. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take you through sort of an example you might want to try at home. Come up with three words you like that resonate with you that are interesting to you that might not have anything to do with each other but that speak to a concept that you've had in your mind maybe a dream you had or or maybe just something evocative that makes you feel something so in this case uh confused surrealist and dripping led to a whole series of really interesting surrealist works so I want you to think about uh, maybe three to five words that are juxtapositions, that are uh, words that are very evocative or that might give you interesting things to illustrate, right? So dripping uh, obviously became very interesting from a number of fronts, but, you know, so did that sort of explosive quality. So you can think about words from math or science, uh, in this case, using words from crystalline and cat gems. This is from a world of uh, crystalline cats that I like to create. And so using words that are of a motif then help it to understand the qualities I'm looking for. And then once I have 50 of these crystalline cats, I can take them out to a different program and create something that's much more detailed, right? So what you saw on the prompt craft graphic coming in, this is work that was done in a tool called scenario.gg. And this is basically a trained model using a mix of mid-journey art with other art from other sources. So when you're thinking about building your own unique world, it does not have to be completely derivative or from one tool only. Sometimes mixing two, three, or four tools with the same prompt, taking it out to stable diffusion, taking it out into a wholly different tool can inform a process. And so we're seeing people, you know, for example, take images back and forth between tools, going to a stable diffusion version like uh, Dream Studio, which we'll look at in a few minutes, to do things like in painting or uh, going out to runway uh, if they're doing animation, uh, playground.ai. There's many, many other tools out there that you might want to be exploring if you're trying to do uh, more detailed uh, revisions of your work, especially. 
So when we're talking about algomods or algorithmic modifiers, uh, these are the parameters at the end of a mid-journey prompt, but they look slightly different when you're uh, in a, a version of stable diffusion and interface on the web, for example, like Dream Studio. So I am going to bring in Dream Studio and we're gonna take a look at that and how it differs from uh, the, the sort of current uh, crop of other tools. Now, this is uh, one of many uh, sort of versions of stable diffusion out there, but it is relatively accessible. So uh, let me go ahead and bring that in for us. Now, what we are looking at here, um, and we, we had the URL up earlier. Let me go ahead and give that to you one more time. Dream Studio is a version of Stable Diffusion that is available and relatively public and accessible. You go to dreamstudio.ai to sign up and then it will keep track of your history. It will help you with a prompt guide and I do recommend that you take a look at their prompt guide as uh, this tool does differ quite a bit from the tools that we just looked at with Midjourney. So uh, we are here in a window where I have my prompt at the bottom. In this cat, in this case, I did some uh, Art Nouveau cats as well. I did not grab the exact same prompt I did from the other group on Mid Journey. So I, what I'm going to do right now is actually grab pretty much the exact same prompt except for the parameters. And I'm going to put the parameters on a different side. But I'm going to go ahead and put the Detail about here, detail 1890. Okay, now uh, we had previously done this as uh, something that was in a 16-9 ratio. So let's go to something wide. Uh, let's see. I think we can take this to 1024 by 768. There we go. So uh, there is a different aspect ratio that we could try. Um, the parameters that I would have done on Midjourney's end of the prompt, I'm doing on the right side of the window here. So what it's calling CFG scale, uh, adjust how much the image will be like your prompt. Uh, so this is uh, introducing aspects of either chaos or um, sort of being true to what I'm asking for. Uh, same with what is showing here as steps, uh, we see that slightly differently in, in mid-journey, but you can, for example, stop a process before it has completely generated, or you can tell it how many generative steps you want it to take. Now, if I'm looking for something more detailed, I might want more steps in a process, but you're gonna notice my credits up here have gone up and it's going to cost me more to get these images. So maybe I'm gonna take it down two or three images. I don't necessarily need to do four. Uh, so let's try two images. Um, in this case, I get to choose which model of Stable Diffusion I'm going to use. So I'm going to use Stable Diffusion 2.1. And I could, for example, use an image. Here is my image source. Now, I'm not going to do that yet because I want to see what it comes up with. And if it doesn't give me what I'm hoping for, I will then come in and maybe put in one of my previous images or something else that I thought worked well. So again, this is dreamstudio.ai. Uh, you can see the amount of time to actually generate something is not the same or maybe a little bit slower than what we were experiencing in Midjourney. But, you know, relatively, if you're trying to get to these kinds of uh, sort of resolved characters, what you're seeing here with these cats are um, the result of 10 generations in a first round of a tool, then training a new model, and doing another six generations in a second tool, in this case, scenario. So uh, in the first tool, we might get something like this, or this, these kinds of characters. Um, but frequently what we are finding is it takes many, many different stages before we get something useful. And so with these kind of cat characters that we've been trying many times, it's taking us four, five, six, seven, eight times uh, before anything looks right. 
This is getting a lot better as the tools become more uh, effective, especially when it comes to designing characters like cats. Uh, obviously the realism for cats was not there even a couple of months ago, but that is not the case anymore. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you a few of these while we wait for the resolution to come. Oh, look at these cats. None of these were what I was hoping for. So I'm going to take blue out and I'm also going to uh, upload an image for it to start with. And in this case, I'm going to give it one of those other images of the cats that I liked from the other program. Uh, so that it will have a reference point that I think is going to work, right? So let's see what it comes up with now. I'm going to have it dream off of this. So as you can see, it sometimes takes a few moments and I'm going to go ahead and pull up that image. This is the one that I liked out of mid journey that I thought, okay, you know, this has some interesting story aspects, you know, maybe with these characters and some others, they could have an interesting history or something. Uh, or maybe they are, you know, the predecessors of some modern cat characters and there's a storyline behind how all of these characters are informing each other. So I've been uh, trying different motifs, both separating the cat and the human in the prompt, um, but also trying cats wearing clothes because these are relatively easy ways to test uh, the granularity and, and the, the sort of facility of a different tool. So here we are in this case, uh, it has spun two very similar images, but I do like them both. Uh, you can see I can download them. I am going to download them because I do like them. This one has a really lovely face. So I can come up here and I can say, I definitely love this image and maybe I want it to have something else or I want it to have a family portrait. Uh, so let's see what happens, but maybe I'll turn the image strength down a little bit and see what happens there as well. So this is again, an iterative process and you're going to find that your mileage is going to vary the first couple of times. Um, but we'll see if, for example, I'm able to get to something that feels like a consistent cast of characters that I could then take out to another program. So uh, it's really great to see you all. Thanks for your comments out on Facebook or on uh, YouTube. I really appreciate those comments. You are absolutely welcome to like, subscribe, share, uh, let people know about the workshops. Oh, weird. Do you see there's a nose on his hat? Ooh, and that's strange. <laughs> I don't know that I love any of these. These are getting kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know. And, and this is where exploring and really trying new things is great, but you might also need to find realistic felines. <laughs> you might need to put some words in there so that it delivers something closer to what you're hoping for. Um, and maybe something a little bit less uh, uh, horrifying. You know, because there are there are times at which where the iterative process and trying to get what you're hoping for is going to take you quite a bit of time. So uh, that is a very quick rundown on the tools at Dream Studio. Dream Studio, again, is one of many different stable diffusion versions you can use. Um, all of those things that we called algo mods are happening on the side of the window. So in this case, when we were looking at that, it's happening on the right. Uh, so the height and the aspect ratio, the steps, the number of images that I'm asking it to generate and what quality, what model it's referencing, all of that. Those are those parameters that we talked about before. And uh, when we're in a place like Mid Journey, we might go to our settings, change it to V3, and then do something else. When we are in a stable diffusion version, we might do that through changing the actual height and width 
and all of those details of our image. So you can do complex prompts with things like aspect ratios. Aspect ratios are normalized in some tools. So for example, in Midjourney, you can use the ratio uh, three colon two will give you the same as a 1920 by 1280. So understand that when you are generating first round, you're getting a relatively small image, but by the time you go to a upscale, uh, in the in the mid-journey language, it's called upscale max, or sort of the, the maximum it wants to give you in that tool, it's going to always be under 2000 pixels. And so there are going to be times where you're gonna to need to take that out to another tool or upscale it, basically download it onto your machine and then upscale it using software. Uh, there are a lot of great upscaler software tools out there. Some of them you pay for once, some of them are credited, and some of them are free for a few times a week. So I want you to go out there and try them out and see what works for you. This is another tool I'm going to encourage you to try out and see what works for you. Uh, this is right at prompterguide.com. So if you are trying to keep track of all of these notes and you're finding that the stuff that we're talking about in the book, for example, in the prompt craft guidebook is a little bit much, you can start at places like prompterguide.com and take notes. We are coming up with a notebook that is coming soon. I just wanted to let you know that it is going to be a few more weeks before all of those tools are available, but I'm just so grateful for all of you who've been able to uh, let people know and share out a little bit more about the book. Hi, this is Evo and the new PromptCraft guidebook is out now on ebook and coming soon in paperback. We are coming up with a whole series of books on world building, on generative media across 3D worlds, video, presentations, and a wide variety of media formats. So stay tuned, jump in on the workshops, and definitely pick up the ebook or the paperback today. So we are not going to dive deep into prompter guide today, but I'm going to encourage you, please donate to what Shane has built over there. He's built a great tool set. If you're trying to figure out how to track your prompts or how to form them differently between Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, this is a great tool. It's in a Google Doc. It's very easy to use. Upscaling, as I mentioned, there are lots of different solutions out there, but you are going to want to upscale your works before you try and publish them. Uh, there are tools such as Topaz if you want to buy once and have it on your system. Uh, there are also a couple of uh, tools with Upscaler or Upscale in their name, and, and quite a few of them will give you mm, somewhere between 10 and 15 upscaled images a week. Uh, which for the casual user is probably going to get you pretty far. So we've talked a little bit about those image prompts, how to form them, how to work in both mid-journey and also in stable diffusion. Uh, these are the kinds of exercises that you might want to try with friends and family. And I'm going to encourage you to uh, think very uh, sort of critically, but also creatively about how you do that. Uh, in this case, I had done something sort of futuristic and in, in a sort of Star Trekian world, but I want you to be thinking about how you can apply these tools effectively in the public space, in community, uh, whether that is with your local efforts. This was uh, for a local memorial uh, exhibit here in Oakland. And I want you to think about how, for example, these tools can be used for concept development, maybe to see a potential project in a hundred different ways, or to try out different ideas, um, both photorealistic and artistic. Uh, that can be with an educational group, that can be with a group of students as well in the classroom. So these are activities that you can absolutely try with your students. Um, maybe think of this as an opportunity to tell a community story differently. In this case, the young man uh, featured 
was a Vietnam veteran who was lost. And so there is a memorial plan that will be built in his honor. Uh, every community has their own stories. And these tools are fantastic at doing the concept development for things like public art. So if you're trying to do that in Midjourney, you might need to explore using different versions of Midjourney, or if that test photo mode isn't doing it for you in Midjourney, go ahead and try something like Stable Diffusion, uh, Stable Diffusion 2.1, or a similar tool, uh, Invoke.ai, automatic 1111. These are uh, versions of Stable Diffusion that are uh, quite specifically tuned for photorealism and, and being able to do something that looks much more uh, human. So other tools you are going to need along the way, if you are thinking about these tools for concept development, you are going to want to understand what a seed is. Now, um, in Midjourney, the seed can always be delivered to you if you will send the emoji of an envelope. So if you're in that Discord window and you respond to the Midjourney bot with an emoji of an envelope, this is what it returns. It returns your prompt, the job ID, and the seed. Now, if I'm tracking on a project and I'm trying to create a series of characters or concepts that are all of the same style and motif with the same composition, or, or have very similar looking characters even, I will frequently use the same seed over and over again, or I will prompt to that same seed. And there are a couple of different ways to do that. We're not gonna go into detail in that in today's workshop, but if you are trying to figure out how seeds can work for creating consistent characters, there are some fantastic tutorials just on this particular topic. And you can do it in both photorealism and you can do it in sort of anime or cartoon characters, but it requires, uh, in most cases, doing hundreds of images in order to get to the characters you want to, to really narrow down that look and feel of the character you're looking for, and then to variate from there to get all of the range of emotion, all of the range of sort of action and background and, and all of the things you might want to use, for example, for a, a picture book or a graphic novel, or in this case, a, a poster. So if you're looking for these resources to use, we've talked a little bit about Prompter Guide. There's also Prompt Locker if you're looking for something that you can pay for out of the gate. Um, there are a number of great GitHub repos on style types as well as Google Docs out there. If you've paid for this workshop today, you will have access to the slide deck. And honestly, there are a whole playlist of videos that I personally love. Uh, Eratem Art and the Black Art Label Club. Uh, we're gonna look at some uh, ideas from another YouTuber, Olivier Sarkis, in a moment. And obviously those upscalers that we just mentioned, like Gigapixel, Topaz, or the stock photos upscalers in your tools, often like Adobe. Many of these tools are already baked into the tools you're using if you are a creative suite user or a graphic designer. So I mentioned uh, YouTubers, specifically this gentleman, uh, Olivia Sarkis, is a uh, YouTuber whose tutorials are extremely helpful for ideation. He's done some great videos regarding um, how to use seeds, for example, to get a wide range of emotion in a character. This is from a style uh, experiment because I wanted you to be thinking sort of flexibly about the language choices. So I want you to notice how he's forming a prompt here. House from the 1929 year. So that is the descriptor of the scene. The house is the most important thing. It's at the very front. The prompt is reading from that front and it's giving the most weight to what is absolutely at the front of the gate. So house from the 1929 year is the most important thing here. Now the style, isometric illustration, is something that he's wanting to keep consistent and maybe create hundreds of these that he could all piece together into a game board, for example. So by doing this over and over and over again, he can basically create isometric squares that can then be pieced together. And then using a tool such as uh, 
Leonardo, our scenario GG, or uh, the tools over at Runway, he can then train a model and build a whole world based on that content. So these are experiments you can try at home. Obviously, typography art or any tool from graphic design that has created a whole sort of series of motifs that you see, uh, that might be a good place to start. Now, remember, you can always combine this with your own image prompts, right? So the same thing you saw with my cat with the flowers here could be your child with all of their favorite topics and words, right? Words are very difficult for most of the image generators. Your mileage is going to vary, but you can try to get it to maybe prompt one word. If you're trying to get it to use specific text, you're going to want to put that text in all caps. You're probably going to want to repeat it more than once in the prompt. You can put it in all text and in quotes. Uh, but anytime you are trying to render text, you have to understand that it will not work properly nine times out of 10. So as you're thinking about your own prompt craft, again, think about these are those fundamental pieces in order. A content type. Are you trying to create a poster? Are you trying to create a backdrop or uh, an environmental setting? Are you trying to create something that is a sticker design? Are you trying to create something that, uh, you know, give it enough context so that it can deliver on the ideas that you are coming up with? Then description, right? That scene descriptor. In this case, you're going to want to remove all extra words. That includes words like the word a, and, or the. That includes uh, very or, or certain sort of vague words. There's a lot of vague words in the English language. Stick to nouns. Use a verb, but maybe not lots of them. And use adjectives, especially. Use your adjectives and your adverbs, but especially your adjectives. So that's where your description matters. Uh, you can use emoji for things like color in mid journey if you're trying to get a specific palette, uh, but also put palette in style. So think about words like vibrant, saturated, if you're trying to get to that, neon or uh, lighting style, cinematic could be a lighting style, natural sunlight, um, moonlight right? All of these things are lighting styles and you can control some aspects of those lighting styles. You can also, again, control things like the lens. So thinking like a photographer and saying 70 millimeter or thinking like a, a game designer and saying Unreal Engine or Octane Render. These are giving you a, a specific look and feel that are going to come from a specific way of working and might work for the kind of world you're building. Now, your mileage is gonna always vary. Think about whether you are trying to create photorealism or whether you're trying to juxtapose. Juxtapositions, you might need to separate with commas um, because it will get confused and, and frequently, the generations that are going to come out will be interesting, but maybe not what you anticipated, right? So the catwalk might look like this or that. And you need to think about how you phrase it in order to get one or the other. So I mentioned ChatGPT and some of the other chat and text generators out there. At this stage, we're not gonna go into too much detail. I'm gonna encourage you to go and pick up the book at this stage because we go into greater detail, not just into ChatGPT, but Magic Write, for example, in Canva. And this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and test out other tools. I am currently testing out Hey Friday. Uh, the one I tested last week, Copy AI, was great. Uh, if you're trying to do sort of marketing and communications writing. Now, you may not need any of these tools at all. This is a book that I did using my Midjourney art, just straight to Snapfish using no other tools, cost less than $100 and was done in two weeks. So whether you're 
thinking about a workflow that includes traditional graphic design methods or using a lightweight tool like Canva or going straight to print on demand uh, using a, a service, in this case, Snapfish. Uh, there are a number of ways you can use the efficiencies of these tools to lower the friction and lower the time to production. Right. So publishing within a week instead of in months or in years. Uh, this is the same with the new book, for example. So this book, after a year of experimentation, uh, was able to be written in just over a month. And in part, that was because of the efficiencies of these tools and because of using these tools, for example, on the writing side to do some of the early ideation. So if you're trying to think about your own world building process and how these tools fit together for you, my studio and our place here at Reality Craft are available to you. We can do a private session. I frequently consult with different teams early stage. Your creative team can come over here and we can all do it together too. So whether it's me coming to you, you coming to me, we work together virtually. We can do a design lab that suits your needs. We also do workshops and creative work similar to these workshops, but in a more focused way to your use case. So no matter what vertical you are in, we can think about coursework that makes sense for you and your team and community. So whether you're thinking about a live or a hybrid or a virtual design lab with us here, I work with a number of other teams, whether that's focused on metaverse, like the metaverse workshop folks, XR and the XR guild leaders, uh, open metaverse interoperability and the folks who are working on the interoperability of 3D assets as well. Uh, so if you are looking for advanced world building tooling, we can support you and also help you find the right creative leaders, whether that's engineers, creators, builders, artists, and others. So I hope you'll reach out if any of those concept design strategy or workshop needs are things that you are specifically looking for. I am currently offering a couple of times a week, currently either talks or private workshops. So the generative creative work when it comes to concept development, there are currently a number of interesting challenges that are coming in this space. I'm gonna do my best to keep you updated, but you're gonna have to come to places like the Reality Craft Group for those conversations. Now, whatever it is, whatever problem you're facing, I hope you'll just bring it to the design lab table because we can solve for these things together. That's why we have both open community spaces and private. So please reach out. Let me know where I can support you along the way. Um, I'm going to be opening up the floor uh, where we can have some conversation time. I will be over in the Facebook group at Reality Craft if you have specific experiments you want support on. And all of you who have been just sharing all of the book pieces and the feedback, I am so grateful for all of you. Uh, we have hit being a number one technical release. So I'm just so thankful to everyone who has been out there sharing it. That has been such a huge boon for me and just has lifted my sails. So thank you so much. From all of us here at Reality Craft, I hope that you will reach out if you need support, whether it's working on the formation of your own work, trying to figure out how these workflows are going to fit together for your particular creative projects. Next week, we're going to be interviewing more of the creative leaders in this space, including a couple of new tools in video and in 3D world building. So stay tuned. Please subscribe and reach out if I can support you in any way. This has been Evo Haining at Reality Craft, sharing a bit from the Prompt Craft Guidebook and Prompt Craft 101 today. If you have not picked up the book yet, please, please, please go ahead and hit that button. Go to Kindle. It's going to be on Kindle Unlimited for only another day or two for free. So if you've been thinking about it, but you're on the fence. Now is the time to grab it before the price goes up uh, on Kindle. Now, not everyone, Kindle users, it is available on paperback. I also do have a PDF version for those of you who I'm designing workshops with. So if you would like to do a private workshop together, you're thinking about how 
the coursework, the notebook, and the guidebook might all fit together for your group of 50 or 100 people, we can have that conversation now. But things are booking really fast. So I hope that you will reach out to me directly. I'm going to put my URL up here one more time, which is evo.ist. And that is how you can reach me here at Reality Craft. And thank you so much for being a part of this. Yeah, and thanks for your support. I just want to give some love to our friends. Thank you for support at Metaverse Workshop. Thank you for the YouTube audience reaching out today. You have been fantastic. From all of us here, I hope you have a great day. Let us know where we can support you, and we'll catch up soon.